Do you guys have a moment? Can I ask you a few questions? Yes, of course. <laughs> Thank you. Hi. Hi. I'm a reporter with China's news agency and we're going to Johannesburg for the BRICS summit. Where did you come from? South Africa. South, South Africa. Africa. From the UK. From the UK. Uh, we're from Russia. From Russia? Yes. And where are you going? Vietnam. 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 Uh, honeymoon. For honeymoon. Wow, yeah. congratulations. So how much yes. do you know about BRICS? Uh, quite a bit. What is BRICS? Why does it matter? And what can we expect next? As I'm traveling from Beijing to Johannesburg, where the 15th BRICS Summit would be held, I'm excited to share with you some of the key insights about this closely watched, influential bloc. It was, it was a UK economist who first, um, Jim O'Neill, I think, was the first first person to, yes. to coin the, uh, yes. the major global uh, economies, which you know, have a, uh, an increasing role to play in rebalancing the world away from the, the old west with you know, the sort of Europe and the US and you know, creating a, a new world order. And... I just touched down in Shenzhen gearing up for my next long flight and BRICS, namely Brazil, Russia, India, China and South Africa actually constitute more than 40% of the world's population and hold a larger share of the global GDP than the G7. BRICS mechanism offers a cooperation platform and development financing for the emerging economies. It reflects the interests of the Global South. BRICS supports development and um, of the BRICS countries, South Africa is probably the one that's least developed. Uh, so South Africa can benefit quite a bit from the other partners in BRICS. So over the span of more than a decade, the BRICS countries managed to pull 100 billion US dollars of foreign currency that they can lend to each other during emergencies and also established the new development bank to fund infrastructure projects in the developing world. Touchdown in Johannesburg, finally. The Global South is far from uniform, but they all share a common sentiment, that is, the current global order, shaped by the West and dominated by the United States, is anything but just, peaceful, democratic, or friendly to the developing world. So despite all their individual differences, the BRICS nations champion multilateralism, we all know that the emerging economies have constantly driven global economic growth. But this growth hasn't been translated into equitable representation in global governance. The Any Summit is a highlight, and this year it will be the first in-person gathering since the pandemic. So the admission of new members will be top of the agenda at this year's summit. The bloc has received more applications than ever, signaling an increasing shift in a global economic order. And discussions surrounding de-dollarization and a common BRICS currency are also likely to take center stage. The BRICS countries feel like the dollar has been increasingly weaponized by Washington and they feel the need to reduce their reliance on the dollar and avoid trade wars and sanctions. So South African President Cyril Ramaphosa will soon host the BRICS leaders and I will keep you posted on how the bloc plans to navigate complexities with a united front. Stay tuned.